Hello. Hello. So they are you're wearing the costume, the ribbon, the ribbon costume <laughs> of the yeah. cover. Hello, everybody. This is Mila, your host from Porto Elliot Lee. Oi, pessoal. Aqui é a Mila do Portal Elliot Lee. And hello, Yadavan. Uh, ich bin Mila. I discovered there is a fan from Germany that was yesterday on the listening party. <laughs> That's why I'm speaking German. <laughs> so, so, hello, Shakira. Hello, Shakira. <laughs> so, uh, we are today with the one and only Elliot Lee. Hooray, everybody! <laughs> so, <laughs> this interview was recorded yesterday, as probably you saw in my stories, but we have to record it again, so. I hope there's no problem. I'm sorry, everybody. You should be this video ready by now, but let's go. So, first of all, because yesterday we didn't see the reaction to the release of the EP, but now we have the reaction. Uh, how did you feel the reaction was? Was it as good as you thought it would be, or better, or worse? I don't know. Definitely just as good if not better. Everyone's been so sweet and people already drew art for me for it and it's just been amazing seeing people commenting on the video and stuff. Uh, so many arts that were made so, made so I know. Actually. <laughs> I'm going to yeah, put some in here uh, or maybe on the whole screen <laughs> if, if it's going to be interesting for anyone to see. It was very, very nice. Um, so the... F one of the questions that what that we had yesterday was um, because Queen of Valley oh Queen <laughs> sorry again Queen of Nothing is a project that seems to be a turn point in your life because it is way more professional with professional videos like before you were used to film in your in your own bed with your ukulele and the phone camera <laughs> but now you have a whole team you have makeup artists you have a dress uh artist a fashion fashion designer so how do you feel that you're right now that you're becoming more professional do you believe this is a turn point as well yeah i mean it definitely feels like it feels awesome to have people on my team so i don't have to all do it myself and i get to have so much say in everything so it's also nice i know a lot of artists when they have teams sometimes their creative vision starts to go away but i get to keep mine so it's really cool and yeah it's just awesome to feel the support and to be able to kind of have the benefit of being able to work with a bunch of people. Yeah, that, that, I think that makes you feel very, very like famous, very artistry. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's so fancy. Because I was here ever <laughs> since the beginning, so I see those things like, oh my god, she's growing. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> um, the second question is, how do you feel that Queen of Nothing differs from your previous works? Yeah, I think the main big difference for me is the fact that it's all kind of put together into one package when I have such a short attention span. So up until now, everything's just been one song and like singles and all that. And for this EP, I get to kind of put it all together and mm -hmm. tell like a story beginning to end. And also there's a little bit of like a storytelling aspect to it instead of just me kind of venting. It's me venting through a story. So. Yeah. Yes, that's true. Like, the concept of this work, it seems to be the journey of EO, right? So, how did you come up with EO? And how do you feel that you're going to work with this character, this alter ego, along your career? Yeah, so I created EO back during Upside Down, because I kind of felt like, you know, the whole story of if there was Upside Down, this is how things would be. And in my head, I was thinking, well, I wouldn't be me either. I'd be someone else. I would be me, but I would not. I'd be like a different version of me. So I created Eel as my kind of upside down world alter ego, um, like a version of me that is the opposite, but also some things the same, kind of like if you flip something upside down, some yeah. parts stay where they were, uh -huh. but a lot of it twitches, and so that's how Eel is for me. And yeah, I mean, I kind of wanted the story to tell the story of Eel as someone who is me, but in like maybe a different world or different timeline or a future that hasn't happened yet. And I kind of want to just use Eel in the future to tell stories like this again more. Ooh, maybe he is your mirror, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so the, that is pretty interesting. Um, another question is, it comes from the first promo for Queen of Nothing. 
In this promo, we have videos of you as a child singing uh, on your birthday party. So it seems to us that your link, your bond to music is very early in your life. So can you talk to us about how did you start making music? What inspired you to follow this way? If you don't know, Elia dropped college, which is huge for some parents. <laughs> a huge problem for some parents, but to pursue their dreams. So this is very cool. Yeah, so I've been doing music my whole life, just kind of for fun, and I've been singing since I was really little, and I've always just loved to listen to songs and sing along to them, and I started playing piano just for fun at a really young age, just kind of like my grandma played, and she'd teach me some small things, and I'd play with her, and then I also took some classes for like a really short amount of time, but I wasn't very good at staying with like the lessons. Um, but I just love, I love music, and since I moved around a lot as a kid, I didn't have a lot of stability, and music was kind of always like, no matter where I moved, everyone was still listening to kind of the same stuff because it was just kind of how pop music works. And so music has just kind of been like a stability for me. And yeah, in college, I kind of went through a really dark time in my life, and I found that music was a really good way for me to open up about it without having to really talk to people face to face. And I started using music like that, and then it kind of just became something that I feel like there's no other way I could live my life except to be a musician. Yeah, my story is a little bit like that. Like, I had this dark time in my life because of college, but not in college, but after college. Because you always hear from your parents that you need to have a degree in order to be someone, in order to be rich, in order to... Well, no, that's not true. Uh, and then mm -hmm. I got my degree and... No, that's not how it works. <laughs> Go back <laughs> two spots in the yep, game of life. Exactly. <laughs> um, the next question. Um, this question was made before the release of the EP, so now I'm going to ask you now that you know what really happened. So, what song caused more impact, in your opinion? Um, I definitely think people are reacting a lot more to Queen of Nothing, which is what I expected because it's kind uh -huh. of about it's about the bubblegum soldiers, and so when the bubblegum soldiers hear it, they're like, "Oh, this is about me," and it's <laughs> kind of I think it resonates a little more. And even though La La Land is also about us and like our world we live in, I think Queen of Nothing is just more it's more comforting and it's kind of more of an anthem for us. So that one for sure. Yeah. Uh, in the party, we were sharing our thoughts, and we felt like La La Land was such a such bangers like we are. La 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 Land. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the peak of the album for me. Like it's a roller coaster, and woo! <laughs> that was La La Land. I'm so glad. <laughs> I. What music? Uh, what song of the album do you believe to be the most personal song? Is it Queen of Nothing, as you said? I feel like the most personal for me would probably either be Queen of Nothing or obviously Pink Freak is about my experience yeah. as someone who's you know judged by people and it kind of tells the story of who I am. Mm -hmm. um, but Drama Queens or uh, but Queen of Nothing is also very personal in the way that it kind of talks about my career from the point of view of how I see my fans and my bubblegum soldiers, how I see them and how they've li uplifted me so much. And I think that's a very unique experience that I've had that not everyone has, and so that's why to me it feels a little more personal. Yeah. <laughs> when you talk about yourself and your friends, it's all it always gets more personal, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So guys, it is time for us to answer questions from you <laughs> that you sent me before. So let's take a look at five questions that we got from our from our participators here in the show. The first question <laughs> comes from Maid. Made from at Made Flowers Road. Once I listen to your music on stream platforms for free, is there any way I can purchase physical media or merch? So I don't have right now. I have nothing like that because of COVID and stuff. Everything kind of shut down. I used to have like a merch distributor, and then when COVID hit, they were like, "Oh, sorry, we can't really distribute anymore." And I was like, "I understood because COVID was crazy. No one could work." And I didn't want to make them be in a factory for COVID, you know, or working or anything like that. And so it totally made sense. And well, hopefully now that things are getting safer and people can go back to work and I can hopefully find someone to distribute stuff for me. I have a lot of designs that I have yeah. ready to make merch out of. And I'm excited to make CDs, cassettes, vinyl, all that. So, yeah. I'll see you soon. I'm very anxious for the CDs and vinyls. And please get a partner of their ships internationally. I beg you. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> 
I think me and the German girl are going to beg you too for that. <laughs> um, now the question from at lonely loser one one one: Who would be your dream collab? First half the question. Um, so my dream collab would probably, I mean, it kind of depends because there's some people that I know will never happen, <laughs> but there's also people that I just have always dreamed of working with, and that would be like Tone on Pilots because they're the reason I make music, and I think it'd be cool to do a collab with them, even though I don't really do collabs, but something with them would be awesome. Um, and then I love Ash Nico, I think she's really cool, and I think we could make something cool and like very opposite together, which would be fun. And then mm. obviously BTS I love, which. It's very unrealistic, but I do know people who have written for them, so it'd be kind of cool to be able to write something for them, maybe. But yeah, yeah, it's because it's pick Korean, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <gasps> uh, it's the po polyglot people gang. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's a polyglot in English. Polyglot of people who speak a lot of languages. <laughs> I think so. I think polyglot is like if you speak more than like three or something, and I only speak two. So, <laughs> <laughs> what are we working on it? Oh, um, second half of the question for Lovely Loser. Um, thanks for making every day a little easier. I love you. <laughs> and would you ever come to Portland? I love you too. Thank you. And I definitely want to come to Portland someday. I want to go all over the U.S. because that's, you know, the, what's going to happen first. Just with how it is, <laughs> I get to go around the U.S. But Obviously, I want to go everywhere in, in the country as soon as possible, or the world. I mean, as soon as possible, I want to go all over um, once I can. Hopefully, I can find someone bigger that'll take me under their wings, so I can open for them in some cool countries. And I just kind of want to go everywhere. So definitely, I'm thinking of Portland. And I believe that too. you're. I believe you're going to get that that person that is big to help you. I'm pretty <laughs> pretty sure. And taking the hook. Thank you. Um, I hope so. Um, touring around the U.S. I'm going to take the question from TV Head Pink. Where would you go if you ever went on tour? And would you go outside of the U.S.? You already answered that you want to go around the U.S., but abroad. Where do you think? Yeah, I mean, everywhere would be awesome, but my dream would be like Japan or Korea because I've always wanted to go there. And it'd be a cool excuse to kind of perform and see the area while I'm there. And I kind of want to go everywhere. I mean, there's really no limits. I just want to see everyone and I want to go everywhere. Yes, just think of a tour in Europe. Just <laughs> that's an idea. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, now the question from N by Two Fairy: What do you do to deal with hate? So I think for me, I don't get as much as some people do, and I'm lucky for that. But when I do get hate. I tend to respond with kindness in some way. Sometimes I'll say thank you, even though maybe it was not something not nice. I'll just say thank you, have a good day, or I'll agree with them jokingly, which is better than getting angry. Um, and sometimes I just ignore it, depending on how bad it is or how ridiculous it is. I'll just ignore it. And yeah, I think in general for me, it's it's important to remember that there's so much nice comments from nice people, and that it's hard not to just let one mean comment let you down, but for me, it's just focusing on all the good and then treating the bad and thinking of them as people and remembering that maybe they had a bad day or maybe they are just, you know, letting off, venting off something in a way that isn't healthy and it's not right, but I also don't think it's a reason for me to get angry back at them always. Mm -hmm. And so I just try to respond to with kindness or ignoring them. Don't feed the trolls. <laughs> the, <laughs> exactly. the number one rule of the internet. <laughs> And our last question yep. for today uh, from Elliot yeah. underscore Earthworks. What inspires you to keep making music? Um, definitely the Bubblegum Soldiers inspire me to keep making music. And as cheesy as it might sound, for me, that's kind of all that I focus on when making music. I know not everyone. Like everyone says that they think about their fans when they make music and all that. But for me, I make it for people who need to hear it mm -hmm. and so to keep myself motivated on the track that i want to be on and you know because sometimes in the industry it's hard to not just be like you know maybe i should just make popular music that everyone wants to listen to and it's like dance music and party music and all that and mm -hmm. it's sometimes hard to not think that way but then i just remember that what i'm making has an impact on you guys and you really matter to me and that keeps me going in the direction i want to go in so yeah. just a question that popped into my mind right now 
Um, the label, the record label, has ever pressured you to make more commercial music, or are they okay with the art the way you do? I think that my label never pressures me to do anything. Luckily, I'm very lucky for that. They're mm -hmm. pretty amusing, and that's why I chose them. But even in any label, in any industry, part of the industry, there's always kind of a pressure to make things that people, you know, that's poppy, that people want to listen mm -hmm. to. And like when I send songs, sometimes they'll be like, well, this is good, but maybe something a little more poppy or a little more rock or something like that. But it's never pressure. It's more just like it almost helps me to think of because what I'm doing is a career and I do want everyone to hear it because I need to find people who need to hear it. So it's almost, it almost helps me to think in a way that helps me find more people listening to music. But I feel like compared to like every other artist, I don't do with any pressure at all. It's really nice. Yeah, that's really, really nice for them. So just to finish our interview, I'd like to show you a video that we made with so much heart and soul <laughs> that I hope you enjoy it. Um, just a second, I'm gonna share the the screen, and there you go. I hope you like it. Elliot Lee's music has really helped me through these hard times this last year or so. Just hold your phone is a really positive, beautiful song that I actually listen to like every day for a good while when I didn't feel like I knew where my life was going, and it's beautiful that and Upside Down or um, Mirror, or just some of those kind of songs that speak to me that I really connect with, uh, I see myself in. Elliot Lee, my queen of everything. Every song they make is so good it's like magic. Whenever I'm sad, I know exactly who to put on to make me feel like myself again. And it's not just their music that makes me feel comforted. It's Elliot Lee herself and all the fans that I can relate to that make me feel less alone and like I can get through these rough times. Hey Elliot, my name is Bianca and I'm sorry for my English in advance, but I just really wanted to thank you for doing what you do, for your art, for everything, for your songs. Uh, you really changed my life. I feel like it was destiny for me to find your songs. And specifically, Sorry I Love You, I already told you that like a hundred times, I think, through Instagram Direct, but Sorry I Love You really changed how I, I feel about others and how I put others on a pedestal like they are everything, and anyway, I just, it means, it means a lot to me, and I'm really grateful for you to keep sharing your songs with us. So I'm really looking forward for Queen of Nothing. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> Elliot Lee has helped me a lot. I can relate to them and their songs. Hold Your Phone by Elliot is such an amazing song and that song was the reason I didn't commit suicide. My friend and their songs has helped me going through the hardest time of my life. And as a non-binary person, it is so amazing to know a non-binary artist. At first, I didn't know they were non-binary. When I read comment of them coming out, I was so happy for them and I, yeah, I screamed, hello. I love them so, so much. They are so talented, I wish I could be like them one day. Sorry it took me so long to write this, but <laughs> I've been listening to Elliot since around 2018 and their music has really helped me through some hard times in my life. I remember sometimes I felt that no one really understood what I went through or what I was going through and every time I listened to their music, I just felt welcome and safe. The first song of theirs I listened to was, I believe, TV Head, and at the time it was a song I really needed to hear because I just related to it a lot and I didn't realize it. Since 2018, Elliot has basically been my go-to artist for if I ever lay on my bed and look at a ceiling while crying as weird as that sounds. Their music not only helped me then during hard times, but I also found the most supportive, amazing, creative fan base I've ever met. As a result of this fan page, I've met so many kind-hearted and pure people who share a love for Elliot just as much as I do. The community as a whole really helped me through hard times in my life. 
The Bobogan soldiers are the most lovely people, and we're well willing to help each other out and lend each other a hand. And even during the hardest times in my life, I always know I can rely on Elliot's music and the amazing fan base Elliot has created. So sweet. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. <gasps> oh. <laughs> oh, we're really, really happy that you liked it. Amazing. Thank you so much. <gasps> oh, it's so sweet. <laughs> so, um, this is the end of the interview. I'm really, really happy that you liked their surprise, mm -hmm. that you appreciated something that we did with so much love. Um, and myself, I'm included <laughs> in one of those people that are grateful for your work. And I guess this is it. I'm speechless. <laughs> um, would you like to give us a oh. final advice, a final comment? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like I always say, and like it's a good to always remind you is that you're not alone. And hopefully this EP reminds you that you're not alone and that you have me and you have the bubblegum soldiers and you have everyone else in the world who there's people out there who feel the way you do and they exist whether you think they do or not. And so you're never alone. And even if we don't know what you're going through, we'll never think you're insane, like my lyrics say. So it's we're safe here with the bubblegum soldiers. And yeah, that's it. You're never alone and we love you. Uh, okay, so thank you so much for sharing some of your time with us and being patient with me and my stupidity. <laughs> <gasps> but thank you, thank of you course. a lot. Yeah, too bad. <laughs> um, I hope in the future Aww. we can partner more sometimes, make some games, listen to you describing your lyrics, such as those genius series. I don't know. <gasps> Do you know the, the genius that artists go oh, and yeah. explain their lyrics? <laughs> that was one of the ideas for the channel. I was, mm -hmm. I was going to try to do that, but. I don't know who's better to do this than the person who did it. <laughs> That'd be so cool. So I don't know. Uh, if you have any <laughs> ideas so we can partner, I'm open. <laughs> so thank you a lot for coming. Um, awesome. Bye bye, everybody. Thank you. Um, I see you.